بِاسْمِ رَبِّكَ الَّذِي Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome to our new show, Ramadan Time. As you know, Ramadan is here. I am so excited. What about you? Are you excited, Samiha? <laughs> I'm going to tell you something that happened quite long ago. Two years ago, prior to a sweltering Ramadan, I made a list of all the things I was going to complete. However, by the 10th day, I would be depleted of my man boost. After Eid al-Fitr, I looked over my list to see what's wrong. But they seemed so easy to accomplish, what went wrong? I believe that the problem was that I aspired to reach so many goals in such a short amount of time without thinking about the reality of Ramadan. I didn't see the strength in saying a simple Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to my sister on the street or holding the elevator door for someone. This year, I decided to change things up. With the help of Ramadan and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I created a list of things that I was going to do, each for one day of Ramadan, to strive for. If you are the way I was, just remember that every good deed, no matter how big or how small, are multiplied 70 times during the month of Ramadan. Subhanallah. Without further ado, I will show you the 30 good deeds, each for one day of Ramadan, with a hadith and ayahs from the Quran. Let's start with the good deeds. Smile. Alhamdulillah, we have made it to another Ramadan. What do you think smiling is? Sunnah. And Katie. Yeah. Here at a hadith, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa has said, When you smile to your brother, it is charity. Did you know that when you smile to someone, it can make their whole day as well? Isn't that amazing? Even the whole day happy. Yeah, they're going to be happy for the whole day. Now that we've finished our good deeds, what time is it now? Hadith time. Yeah, how did you know that? <laughs> and Umar ibn Khattab radiyallahu anhu qala sami'tu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul innam a'malu bin niyati wa innama li kulli imri'in ma nawa faman kanat hijratuhu ila dunya yusibuha aw ila imra'atin yankihuha Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu said, I heard Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, Deeds depend upon intentions and every person will get that which he intended. So whoever migrates for worldly benefits or for a woman to marry, his immigration will be for that which he migrated to. The lessons from this hadith. The first lesson is, Allah judges our good deeds based on our intentions. Number two, our deeds are rewarded according to our intentions. So, for example, if we intend to do something bad, then our deeds are rewarded, or maybe you don't know what will happen. If our intentions are good, then we will be rewarded. Our deeds are rewarded according to what you intend for. Number three, we are allowed to migrate or move for worldly reasons. And number four, the last one is the best reason to migrate or move is for the sake of increasing or protecting our Iman. The discussion corner. You're included in this. Okay, number one, who is the narrator of the hadith? Um. <laughs> Should I tell you? The narrator of the hadith is Umar ibn al-Khattab. Say it. Um, Umar, Umar ibn, ibn Khattab. Al-Khattab. Al -Khattab. Number two. Give one example you can think of as a good reason for your family to migrate or move. Yeah. yeah. So let me show you. Let me read the, the last two lessons, okay? We are allowed to migrate or move for worldly reasons. So, 
We can move for worldly reasons, but what example can you think of for a good reason for your family to move around the world? Mm. Which one? Maybe. For the sake of increasing or protecting our Iman? Iman. <laughs> yeah. Can you say for the sake of? For the sake of? Increasing? Increasing. Or protecting our Iman? Um. Or protecting? Or our our iman. iman. Number three, before we do any good deed, we should place a good intention in our heart to please Allah. Do you think this is true or do you think this is false? True. Yeah, that's true. How did you know that? <laughs> well done. Now that we've finished hadith time, we're going to move on to... Um. Learning surahs. Yeah. <laughs> Let's start from Surah Nas. Say it with me, say A'udhu Billah with me. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Now repeat after me, okay? Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbin Nas Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbin Nas Malikin Nas Malikin Nas Ilahi nas Ilahi nas Min sharril waswasil khannas Min sharril waswasil khannas Alladhi yuwaswisu fi sudurin nas Alladhi yuwaswisu fi sudurin nas Min al jinnati wan nas Min al jinnati wan should we say that again? No. <laughs> Let's say it again, or else you're not going to know it. Okay? Okay. Repeat after me. Qul a'udhu bi rabbin nas Qul a'udhu bi rabbin nas Malikin nas Malikin nas Ilahin nas Ilahin nas Min sharril waswasil khannas Min sharri waswasil khannas Alladhi yuwaswisu fi sudurin nas Alladhi yuwaswisu fi sudurin nas Min al jinnati wan nas Min al jinnati wan nas Well done! Now, I taught you the surah, but tomorrow... You're going to have to say the surah by yourself. Oh. <laughs> I will help you, but on the second time, you have to say it by yourself, okay? Okay. Just like I taught my sister, you can teach your sister or brother as well. Mashallah, my sister has learnt it quickly, but your brother or sister can learn it quickly as well. See you tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum. Say assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>